Hello, everybody. It's great to be with you again. My name is John Kranz with Compass Games, and tonight is episode number 46 to close out the year. It's December 17th, 2020. We're trying to make it through this year in one piece. I hope uh, you can say the same as much as well. It's been a very unique year for, uh, for everybody, I'm sure. And I uh, look forward to uh, covering a uh, year in review tonight. We'll also talk about uh, what's coming in 2021, what to look ahead to. And we're going to sneak in one game preview, a little sneak peek of a game that's uh, presently being uh, finished and getting closer to the printer. So I thought we'd mix in uh, one project update for a few minutes while we've got a whole lot of other business to cover. And as always, I'd like to just share my screen just for a moment to... Uh, to uh, show uh, what we have going on right now. So as you can see, we have our uh, website. I'm not gonna zoom in this time though, cause we're gonna be covering it in a little bit different style uh, this evening since we're doing a year in review and talking about uh, 2021. But I do wanna point out a few things, three things in particular, top banner as our holiday catalog, and that's running through January 31st. So it's not just through December, uh, it actually extends into end of January, 2021. So that again, all in stock items are 35% off. Then we have our pre-order prices. And I believe there's also, I believe it's if, it's if you spend at least 160 or 180, there's an additional savings. It's on the catalog itself. It mentions it as well. So definitely check out our catalog. You can download it by just clicking on this banner. You'll see a PDF you can go to. Definitely recommend it. And the uh, catalog also features uh, what our expected release dates are for 2021 as well for all our games that are on pre-order. The other two things I want to mention, as always, is we have our newsletter sign up on the left side, that bright orange yellow box is all you have to do is put your email address in there for us, submit it, and we'll hit your inbox maybe once a week. We're not going to overrun you at all. And then thanks to everybody who reaches out to Compass via the talk to us where you see my little waving hand at the bottom right. That's where you can also send us some general feedback, suggestions, ideas. Um, if you're actually needing a direct customer service from Compass, like an order status or pre-order shipment status, you can just email uh, sales at compassgames.com. That will go straight to the office folks in the warehouse and will cut me out as the middleman, which I'm sure you'd probably like to do anyway. So, <laughs> so there you have it. So that's our update. We're going to talk about schedules and everything tonight, obviously. Uh, first, let's go ahead and uh, switch gears here for a second. So I want to talk about the uh, newsletter that just went out today. Um, so if you sign up to the newsletter, as you can see here, uh, this is what we basically send out once a week. And we're spotlighting tonight's broadcast, which is our wrapping up the year 2020 for Compass Games. So thanks for joining us here tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, and then the rest is really a reminder. So we've got the Kickstarter for Armageddon, which I'll show here in a moment. That's our current Kickstarter program. As a reminder for those that pre-ordered the game already, there's nothing you have to do. You've already pre-ordered. Kickstarter is just another way for us to get the word out, to, to let people know about the game if they haven't been to our website or haven't heard of the games before. So that's just another way we can reach out to others. So just wanted to make that clear to everybody. Um, also, we've got Conquistadors, our last shipping game uh, in the, earlier this month in December. A lot of people have received it. Looking forward to some play reports. We haven't seen too many play reports yet, but maybe with the holidays, that's going to change. And of course, the game's still available at pre-order price. Stellar Horizons, again, a great gift idea. It's back in print, so uh, that's the one most people have asked about as far as are you going to have it ready in time before the winter break. So yes, we got it out about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago. A lot of people have received it already. So so um, again, just a great idea if you want to order it and have it shipped out right away. Uh, we can try to get it to somebody hopefully before, uh, say, the 25th even, if that's the date you're looking at uh, as well. And then we have upcoming titles. I'm going to cover more here in a moment. So we're going to skip by that for a second. Again, I talked about the catalog already. Uh, we're on our Discord channel. We've doubled our membership. So we're over 220 members now. And I'll be doing the after party. Uh, we'll do an after show party on the Discord channel. So for those that have access to it, you can just head over to our Discord channel. We'll go into the Applebee's lounge tonight. And we'll just sort of get together as a group, do some video chat, have some fun, and talk maybe about everybody's holiday plans coming up uh, for end of this year. Also, we've got our mobile app. So if you actually go to our um, website or look at our newsletter, you can just take your phone to that uh, QR code and that will jump you 
uh, to our special page with all our links, including to our Discord channel. In case you don't know how to reach Discord, you can find it that way as well. So we definitely recommend uh, use Linktree. It's got a lot of handy links on it to help out. We've also got our recording, which is uh, what we did our last town hall meeting, number 12, with Bill Thomas last week on the 10th. And that uh, you can watch that full episode now on our YouTube channel. So that's a lot we covered there. I actually want to backtrack just one tab here. So I don't want to forget uh, Steve Carey. I shout out to Steve Carey. He was out in California. He was mentioning to me that uh, he was really impressed with uh, this 1862 Brothers at War game. Not about the game itself so much, but about the tutorial video that was created by uh, Christopher Moeller, the designer of the game. You might be familiar with Christopher, by the way, because he's the designer of Napoleon's Eagles, which we released earlier this year. And we have his second title in that series coming out. It's on pre-order right now. It was part of our pre-order Palooza that we did um, in earlier this winter. But uh, Steve Carey just says, this is absolutely bar none, one of the best tutorial introductory videos he's mm-hmm. seen for a game. He felt like he was fully educated on exactly what to expect from the game, and it was just very well done. So a uh, reason I want to also provide props and thank Car- uh, Stephen for that is also Christopher Moeller is going to be very excited as the designer. He spent considerable time putting this tutorial together. So I just want to make sure you're aware of it. So if you navigate uh, to our website, you can just type 1862 in the search bar at the top, and you'll see that 1862 Brothers at War will come up pretty quick just with those four numbers there. And I'll jump you to this page. And again, just scroll down to the bottom and definitely check out that video tutorial. It comes highly recommended uh, by Steve Carey. And of course, I'd rather believe customers than anybody from Compass. It's just a more honest uh, answer you'll get, I think. That's a more objective uh, feedback. And that's what we love to hear from customers. So let me switch back to full mode here. And let's see what we've got next to cover. So let's go here uh, now to our, our Kickstarter. I wanted to mention our Kickstarter just briefly for a moment. There's five or four days remaining. It was five days a little, just a few minutes ago. So we've got about 60 backers, which is great. Uh, it, again, for funding, it's it's not something we do for funding for a game. Uh, if you're not familiar with Armageddon, it's a really fun beer and pretzel style game. A solitaire up to a bunch of players. I've seen it played personally at Consum World Expo, which is an event I host every year. They break it out late at night in the fo- foyer area, and uh, they're ho- hooting and hollering, just screaming. It's just a lot of fun uh, to play the game. There's a video here you can watch that was prepared by the designer, Kerry Anderson. And if you scroll down uh, to the very bottom, you can also check out the full rules booklet. Just click on the link, and you can also learn more about the game that way. So again, just want to share that with you uh, quickly. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to segue, as promised, to a year in review for Compass Games for 2020. So I just want to bra- basically walk through memory lane with you. I can't believe it's uh, it's been such a crazy year. So tr- try to compartmentalize just Compass Games with everything else going on. It can be a, a bit of a challenge, but I, I tried to focus on everything relating to Compass to try to put it in a nutshell for you all. So I thought we could... Uh, we could try to do that next. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. So let's uh, let's go back to the screen here. Let's take a look back at 2020. Hopefully, some of these titles will look familiar to you. Yes, I've pretty much put these in order from left to right and top to bottom in order of release. So France 44 was our very first release of 2020. Uh, right after the new year, I don't believe, uh, even for the first few releases, I don't think I knew anything about this pandemic thing yet brewing that was going to hit us, but definitely not early January when France 44 was released. That's that Mark Herman, uh, designer edition game. I do get questions about, uh, yes, there is a Russia 44 game in the offing and it's supposed to mate, uh, and so you can join both games together. Uh, but to be honest, uh, Mark Herman left his hard copy information for that game, uh, back east before the pen or, or as the pandemic hit, he's now west coast bound and he's obviously not traveling right now for uh, precautionary reasons. So he, he explained to me and I've checked in with him that he just, uh, you know, he's not traveling at all and uh, he can't get to his materials for Russia 44, which he would need to complete that design. So, uh, so we're just going to focus on France 44 and just to let you know there's a big C3I review coming out. Uh, as well on uh, France 44. We think it's going to bring a lot of attention to the game, uh, which uh, we think uh, there's some nice enhancements that were made to the game. Judd Vance did the review, uh, who's a very uh, 
really likes the game a lot. He's, he's played the game for many years and he was uh, helping develop the new edition of the game for us, for Compass. So uh, look for the C3I review in the next issue from Roger McGowan that will spotlight uh, France 1944. Next, we have Oskrieg. So Oskrieg uh, is based similar system to what was introduced with Pacific Tide from Gregory Smith. And of course, we've got a game on pre-order, which is Imperial Tide, which will be coming next year, uh, first half of next year, which is covering World War I. So Oskrieg takes Pacific Tide uh, from water to land, so from sea to land, and it's obviously covering the Eastern Front. So uh, that's one uh, we recommend you definitely check out if you like the Pacific Tide system. Uh, America Bomber. So that's now we're getting into our foray of uh, alternate history a little bit here. So it's uh, we didn't win World War II. We didn't wrap it up. It went in favor of the Germans, at least in Europe. Probably we could say for the Japanese as well. So the, the uh, concept of America Bomber, it's uh, Germans that are uh, bombing American towns. Gregory did do research. Uh, there was there are there is research available on on what were the targets the Germans had in mind uh, for the United States. So Greg talks about the history and the research that was put into the game as far as the targeted sites, etc. So it is an interesting look of, of what didn't happen. And and one thing I should just take a moment and pause here for everybody. So if we take a look at everything we did for 2020, it's around so around 20 releases. There's a few reprints as well. I'm not going to talk about the reprints tonight, but there were about 20 games. And out of the 20 games, which was somewhat surprising, was the most games, which was World War II again, the count was only five. So there were really only five items from 2020 that were World War II. We had two for World War I and pretty much a split across the board, like two for Ancients, uh, two for around Civil War, then a pre-Civil War gunpowder era, uh, we had ancients around too. So we really had a broad, so I think that's really important. So um, looking at a portfolio approach, because not everybody loves Eastern Front or just World War II, right? You, you, you have other games you want to play. And also we try to do that with Paper Wars. We'll, we'll do all types of games, but Paper Wars is another venue for us to get uh, you know, more, more games out that might be on more unique, compelling topics that haven't really been done before. But out of the 20... And I think one was even a player's guide. So one of the five, so one of those five, I think was a player's guide and the other four were actual games for World War II. So it was a pretty broad mix, to be honest, for 2020. We'll see what happens for 2021. We're going to look at that here in a moment, but I just want to sort of cap off in a big overview fashion. Yeah, we had about 20 releases and we would have had more, but uh, you know, we were listening to your feedback and a lot of the feedback that did come in was about the counter thickness. We wanted thicker counters. So Bill spent a few months looking at that and then he spent some more time once he found the supplier to get the print test runs done just right and we did have complications where the back side of the counter sheets had a too much it was too much weight on the press so if you notice your counters on the back side they might be indented slightly from the press and that press was too strong so bill lo looking out for the quality you know looking out for all of us you know it took longer to go through that and that basically meant a lot of games we had uh, on the schedule for say a late october through end of the year were pushed uh, into next uh, next year into 2021 because we want to get these counters out uh, these improved counters so so we actually had a very quiet um, last quarter for q4 of this year just to let you know uh, and i'll talk in a moment here uh, steve's asking about which games of 2020 were most popular that's something that um, that bill talked about in our town hall last week as well i'll definitely cover that as well we'll, we'll cover the top three uh, what those games were but again, getting back to America Bomber, then we then had two issues of Paper Wars. Uh, Siam, again, it's not World War II, right? So <laughs> we had Siam, Fall Siam as the topic for Paper Wars. And then we did have John Butterfield's Battle of the Bulge. And uh, this was originally, a lot of people didn't know this. It actually did start as a board game. Uh, what happened was when it went to market, it actually got converted for the iPad. Uh, for Eric Lee Smith's Shenandoah, Shenandoah Studios. So if you're familiar with what Shenandoah Studios did a few years back with first The Bulge, uh, and then he did uh, Mark Herman's game on North Africa, Ted Rasier's game, I think it was Moscow. They did several titles for the iPad. Did quite well, actually. But 
Bulge was the first one, and it actually did start as a tabletop board game design. It got converted uh, to a digital version through Eric Lee Smith's involvement for Shenandoah Studios. So we've brought back the board game version, and that one, we've just heard really great reviews on. It's a fantastic, fantastic two-player game. Plays really quickly, but it's sort of like that whole Queen's Gambit. Uh, takes me back to Queen's Gambit this year and the big who... Uh, brouhaha about that popular series and what it did for chess and uh, Battle of the Bolt sort of plays like that because you've got very few units but those decisions you're making uh, with the initiative and number of moves you can make it's it's uh, it's gut-wrenching really for both sides so it's it's really just a wonderful also reminds me a bit of Pacific Tides the same way where it has all that tension to the play but Bulge definitely fits that to a T uh, as well just to let you know and that's from John Butterfield. We have several other games in the series that are going to be coming as well. Next, we have uh, Napoleon's Eagles. Again, I mentioned Christopher Moeller earlier. Uh, he did that uh, very nice introductory video to 1862 Brothers at War that Steve Carey wanted me to mention tonight. And Napoleon's Eagles was released, as you can see here, a uh, pure card game, two different games in one. And we've got the same thing going for the pre-order coming up for next year. Uh, Fold a Gap from Adam Starkweather. Uh, this was one of our, um, it was asked, what are uh, the most popular games of 2020? So on this first screen, there's actually two screens for 2020. On this first screen, I can pull out two for you. So Stellar Horizons uh, was the most popular uh, hit for Compass. And some people responded to Bill like, what, a sci-fi game was the most popular release for Compass? It, it kind of makes sense because if you think about um, the crowd over on Board Game Geek and science fiction games and how many units of science fiction games can truly move, uh, you've got the Mars uh, series games, for example. So there's a huge potential market actually for science fiction if you really think about it. There's a ton of, I'm surprised there's not more science fiction games actually. There's a few that have been put out by other publishers, but not, mu not much at all really uh, uh, from, say, the Wargame Publishing Group, just a few. But Stellar Horizons, yeah, it sort of tapped into that market if you think about it, and it really speaks to that market. So that's why we sold out of the game uh, rather quickly in a few months, and now it's back in reprint. As I mentioned, that was part of the newsletter review where we mentioned Stellar Horizons is back in print now. But Stellar Horizons was number one, and then Fold a Gap also came in, I believe, at number two. So Fold a Gap, nice monster game, Third World War series, uh, or anything on the Third, Third World War is so such a hot topic right now. We've got multiple uh, publishers doing games on, uh, on, again, the outbreak of the Third World War, NATO Warsaw Pact, tons of games. Thin Red Lines is another company that comes to mind that's doing a great job. Uh, I think it's, I want to say Fabio is his first name. <laughs> I hope I got Fabrizio's name right. But uh, again, he's done some great work uh, with attention on that era, you know, 80s era, etc. So yeah, Fold a Gap just sort of scratched that itch for everybody. So that was a very, very popular game. And then we switch over to Dawn of Empire. So Dawn of Empire is uh, sort of along the lines of War at Sea. If you think about War at Sea with a simple game system with a lot of dice, a lot of fun action, moves super quickly, great map, really easy to play, uh, but fun to play. So that's where Dawn of um, Empire falls. And a lot of people talked about the production quality of Dawn of Empire. So, so that rounds out um, nine of the games, nine of the first games from 2020. So let me see, just for a moment, before I leave this page, I want to just see what comments we have here um, about the game. So let's see. Well, thanks, Mo, for um, the, the kind comments. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. There's a lot of World War III 1985 games out there. Yeah, not just at Compass. There's it's a very hot topic. Like I mentioned, uh, thin. Uh, yeah, there's there's several publishers, and um, some names are escaping me right now. But there's several publishers right now uh, that are doing it um, and are doing a, a great job. So absolutely. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, yeah, Stellar Horizons <laughs> deserves two slots. Michael, thanks for joining us on YouTube. Yeah, that's sort of that big oversized box. I think it came in at sixteen pounds is what the weight of the box is, a little over uh, 16 pounds. So it's uh, quite large, quite large for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, still Horizons are right, but I don't recall when. I think my better uh, half whacked me on the head with it. <laughs> so I'm surprised you've come too, John. I, th I think you'd still be knocked out. Uh, if you got hit with that box, uh, good luck to you. So, so that's, that's, that's a big one. Uh, let's see. The next C C3I very soon also has a Hunter's expansion by Greg Smith. That's right. Thanks, thanks Steve-O, for reminding me over on YouTube channel that, yeah, Greg did submit uh, an expansion for the Hunters. And the Hunters is something I worked on with Greg. 
oh gosh, eight or nine years ago, but it's now in its third print run, right? And uh, it's great to see uh, Roger McGowan's helping support uh, that wonderful series of games. So we've got some nice topics in there. We've got the Hunters and we've got uh, France 1944. Uh, America Bomber, yeah, waiting for the sequel, Defending America, where you get to switch sides. Uh, thanks, Dennis. That's, uh, that's coming. It's in the tank, as they say. It's been printed and all that fun stuff. So we should look forward to seeing uh, Defending America in the first half uh, of next year uh, let's see thanks Jim for your pre-order much appreciated thanks uh, Joe for the very kind words over on YouTube appreciate you joining us tonight and, and saying you like what you saw in 2020 from us hopefully it helped take some people's minds off what was going on in the real world as well uh, let's see here. Uh, America Bomber would have woken up a sleeping bookfoot. <laughs> okay, Michael. Hopefully that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, John John says, eh, now we didn't do a space game. I mean, we could always add a variant. You know, we didn't take it to space, John. So we could combine it with Stellar Horizons maybe with a little bit of the America Bomber to it. Uh, we'll see. Tom's clipping folder right now. So that's, I didn't mention it's a company scale system, by the way. So this is company scale system. It's going to have some games that will, um, I believe it will actually mate with the game. I think, I think the, the plan was for Adam that they could join as well. So we'll, we, we'll see what happens. And yeah, Jack, I like Eastern Front as well. So we'll see about that. Uh, let's see. Be sure to stop in the CSS topic and console world. Folda has a lot of errata. Okay, I'll, I'll definitely check in Shin Godzilla. Actually, Adam Starkweather, hopefully he's in there. He's, uh, you know, he's the designer, so he sort of owns the project, uh, if you know what I mean, uh, Shin. He's, he's the one that's going to be responsive and be able to respond and act to your feedback because he's the designer. So uh, hopefully we'll get uh, some good feedback uh, from you there. Uh, yeah, sci-fi isn't the thing for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those cross-market things, not for everybody, for sure. I'm definitely going to cover the other games that were most popular. We covered Stellar Horizons already and Folda Gap, which were uh, two of them. Uh, Darren's been playing World War II Commander uh, with his teen son. I think his son beat him in the first game, I believe. Um, so we'll see. Maybe Darren can give us an update on that. I think Darren said he lost in the first game. So maybe Darren can give us an update on that. It's uh, great to see Michael with Paper Wars. We've got Ty Bomba involved now as editor with Paper Wars. So really happy about that. And Mo's got the results here from the town hall. So we've got Stellar Horizons already covered, uh, Fold a Gap, and I'm not going to show number three yet. You can probably see it if you're on YouTube right now. YouTube viewers can see what he put for number three, but not those on Facebook. <laughs> That's for sure. Thanks also uh, for mentioning that. Um, oh, you don't see the mention if a, a discount uh, for on the catalog itself. It was in, I believe it was in the order form area. There's a little order form where you can fill out information. I believe it was in there near the bottom in in small print. But I do recall there is some type of a discount in the catalog itself because I saw it once. I answered a question uh, through the Talk to Compass Games, you know, that waving thing on the homepage, and somebody asked if there was any additional discounts. And I thought, no, I don't think there are. We're doing our, our big uh, catalog, uh, winter catalog sale. So I don't see why we would have any other discounts. But then Bill Thomas corrected me and said, no, there was something in the catalog about uh, additional savings. So we'll have to hunt that down there, but it definitely should be in there. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the Market Garden following up to Bulge. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting more games out in the World War II uh, Commander series as well, for, for sure about that. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of these items. So thanks for your comments and feedback, and uh, yeah, critical feedback as well. So thanks for the critical feedback. Uh, if there was a rat in Folda, we'll definitely check that out. I'm not too familiar with the amount of errata for that game, so we'll, we'll certainly you know find out what that's all about. So let's go to uh, let's go to the rest of 2020 into I think what's probably getting into the the second half of 2020. So let's see here. So here we go. So actually the first item that we have on this list was not a game, but it's still World War II, so I counted it. I hope that's fair. So we had the Russia Besiege Player's Guide. So I've heard some really great things. So Russia, Russia Besiege came out at the previous WBC. I think it was 2018. And I think that was the hot item. It was, it was we had advanced copies. Uh, actually, we could just literally came through the warehouse just in time to put on the truck to WBC in 2018. And that seemed to be a really hot, really hot topic at the time. So, so that did really well. And then Art Lupinacci, the designer, 
he's done just a spectacular job with the player's guide. If you don't have the player's guide, but you've got the game, uh, you sort of want to go, you want to go all in guys. <laughs> so I, I don't want to use a different analogy here because I'll get in trouble with Bill. But if you've got Russia besieged the deluxe and it's the deluxe edition, don't forget, you want to finish, you want to, if you get my sense, you want to keep, keep that train of thought, right? And you'd want to pick up the player's guide because it's not only has uh, a million gazillion illustrations to explain play, gets into play strategy. It also has two small extra counter sheets as well for some advanced things you can do, some variants. So definitely worth checking out. So I um, hope some of you online have Russia besieged. If you have the player's guide, you know, you probably give a thumbs up or talk about with those online, you know, about the contents of the player's guide. But uh it's something you'd want to get for sure if you've got the game already. So Decision at Castrine is one of my personal favorite games. So as a gamer in the hobby since a young age, uh, I fell in love with the 3W Wargamer magazine uh, as it first came out of Castrine. Just absolutely love that game. I think Vance may have done some other North Africa series games by then. I'm not sure. You know, he had a few other battles he did. But uh, something about Castrine was just... I just amazing to me. I love the desert warfare in World War II and just love the game. So I actually got a hold. If you haven't seen the boxed edition, 3W did beautiful boxed edition of the game as well. So we paid homage to uh, to the box edition and again a personal project for me here. So uh, I was very happy to work with the Bundes Archive and actually get the photo and license agreement to be able to get that photo from the Bundes Archive for our front cover. So we could have it again because I think it was just the perfect cover for the perfect game. So uh, again, one of my favorite games from Bands, um, absolutely. So I uh, hope you've had a chance to check that out. And then again, see, there's that Ancients itch. So Hannibal. So we go to Ancients with Paper Wars. Hannibal, again, heard some great things about it. Um, again, getting away from World War II again, as you can see here, going back to Ancients. We expect to have some more Ancients games. You know, we'll have a stronger Ancients showing actually in 20, 2021, actually, by maybe an extra game or two based on our, uh, our release roadmap for 2021. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, Hannibal was a great release for Paper Wars. Really excited about that. Uh, the top to round out our top three games for 2020 it's brotherhood and unity so very unique topic uh again the designer being based living in the area himself the being so intimately tied to the history and the people of what the horrible horrible events that transpired uh at the end of the past century 20th century uh, just amazing uh, the re response to the game has been just fantastic and uh, sure I'll be honest with you I I've received uh, I think one or two hate emails about how could compass I think they were non-gamers how could compass do a game on a topic so fresh in history but um, I think I've as I've explained before I'm sort of old school about uh, simulations and uh, it's about the history and it's not about the pleasantness and the, and the good warm feeling fuzzy feelings you might get if you were really thinking about what's transpiring on the tabletop yeah usually you know that gets compartmentalized but also you're also learning about history and hopefully those same atrocities and things won't happen ever again so uh, that's just my uh, personal viewpoint about uh, Instead of reading a book, you can sim simulate simu you know, simulate these things and, and get a, a deeper appreciation with, through decision-making and understanding the issues of the time, at least through the designer's eyes. So, but again, that was one or two people and we get, we get, yeah, we get hate mail in every game we release. So, so that's nothing out of the ordinary for Brotherhood and Unity, but uh, absolutely just a stunning response to the game. Just absolutely wonderful. Uh, we're very happy, by the way, that we have Brotherhood and Unity, not just on Vassal, but it's also available on Tabletop Simulator. So if you want more of that modern 3D look, uh, really gorgeous looking, a uh, game engine to play it online, which uh, Tabletop Simulator gets a lot of high marks from people. So we've got Brotherhood in Unity is one of the one of the few games we do have already on Tabletop Simulator. So definitely want to check it out. Uh, so another game didn't make top three, but it definitely made a lot of noise for us and actually moved our product roadmap forward in terms of quad games. And that was we released Brief Border Wars. Brian trains Brief Border Wars. He does always some very compelling topics, usually post World War II era typically for him and boy the quad game uh from you guys the quad game surge just started with brief border war so that's how this eastern front operational battles game came to being that we're going to be doing next year um Br uh, brief border wars 2 is coming next year brian's already working on it 
there, you know, four different games, four different topics. So this game's done extremely well. Um, Mo's gaming table, Maurice has done a great job. Uh, I know other uh, YouTube channels have also done, uh, you know, coverage of this game, which we really appreciate all the coverage, all the different channels. I, I don't know if Ardwolf, if Ardwolf's Lair has done it already. I think Players Aid's done it. Um, but uh, again, just, you know, really fantastic comments on Brief Border Wars. So thanks. Thanks for giving us the thumbs up on that. It's, it's really wonderful. So um, a pretty strong, pretty strong series of games right there in that top line. You know, again, Brotherhood and Unity, Brief Border Wars, Hannibal for a, a magazine game. Just really strong, solid uh, feedback from gamers, really being satisfied with what we came out with. And then we wrap up the bottom row for 2020. These are the, the last games. And we have Assault Artillery. I think personally for me, I don't know if you agree with me or not, if you think about Compass games and you might think about what games maybe just sort of, they just sort of do a flyby. I really wonder if the, and I'm not talking about from a sales perspective because I don't even know what the sales numbers here are, but in terms of seeing people talk about it online, I don't see much talked about the Red Poppy series and we're up to volume three now, but each game looks fantastic. I've pulled out the maps and looked at the counters and more importantly, looked at the designer notes and the historical detail of the game map for these World War I battles and the system itself that it portrays these battles. Uh, it's probably the most interesting stuff of World War I I've seen. I know we've done a lot of World War uh, games, especially strategic level, but at this scale, it just looks like a wonderful, approachable series. I don't know how others feel about it, but um, I feel like if there could be some love thrown at a game that deserves it, I want to say it's the Red Poppies campaigns. I would hate to see... I would love to see more games. I'd like to see some designers step up uh, that know about the history and order of battle of other World War I battles and could actually step in for the designer and do more games uh, as well so it's not just him doing them because I think it's a great system to use for other World War battles. It would be fantastic. Then we get into another fairly heavy box but cannot compete with Stellar Horizons, even with all the blocks, and that's Jacobite Rising. So Jacobite Rising is a standalone game on the commands and colors a revolution uh, system. So again, you can play Jacobite Rising standalone. And again, we've again seen uh, people have said Richard Borg's adaptation for this era uh, is really, really popular. So I've uh, heard a lot of positive things about Jacobite Rising. It's also a very big package as well, for sure. And even though I mentioned top three, you know, I, I almost feel like these other games did so, you know, very well. And Conquistadors doesn't even have time. It doesn't have a runway to re really register for 2020 if you think about it being a December release. But Dawn's Early Light, well, that did, that did gangbusters for us. And that was one where, you know, thankfully we did a Kickstarter, which I think helped a lot because it's a new designer. Um, uh, and we had uh, we we had the rules, so we had the rules available, etc. And we also had him on to talk about the game. So that did extremely well. Dawn's early light. A lot of people scratching, a few people at least scratching their head, wondering what the game would really be like. But when we brought out the Kickstarter with the rules booklet, you could download it and view. You can even go to Kickstarter right now, and it should be on our web page, product page now as well. But uh, it really was, I think, very insightful to to have those rules there available to really learn about. Uh, what the designer did here for Don's Early Light, and that game's done really well. Of course, we had our designer interview fairly recently in the past month uh, on Attrition of Souls. So we had Scott Librant on, uh, which was a very good interview. We had a lot of great questions and a lot of interesting comments by uh, Scott were made about his approach to World War I and how he approached games being a more of a Euro designer. He focuses first, as he mentioned, on mechanics, and then he finds situations that best fit those mechanics of play and really had a lot of positive feedback about our interview. So if you go back uh, to the Compass YouTube channel, if you, and if you look under our Compass Games Live episodes, I think it was just uh, yeah, one or two episodes back, maybe in the last episode, actually. I think it was the last episode, actually, is when we talked with Scott, and, and, and that went, uh, yeah, that went really well. And then, uh, gosh, it's so wonderful um, to have the Conquistadors having shipped this year. I was really wondering if we were going to make the cut. 
uh, to have Jonathan Southard's return to the hobbies. He's a great designer with Carrier and all these awesome Civil War games that he's done as well. He's done some great titles. It, it dates back a little bit to Victory Games uh, time frame. He also did West End Games titles, Civil War. But boy, the Conquistadors, just a wonderful game. But again, the runway for Conquistadors and for Attrition of Souls as well, the runway is just not there anymore in 2020 to really rank this. Uh, as So when, I, when we say top three games for 2020, yeah, to be honest, I'm not worrying too much about bragging rights here because really I think, I mean, there are so many winners here for us. So yeah, the three we mentioned already uh, for sure, Stellar Horizons, Brotherhood and Unity, uh, fold the gap, the top three, but you got to look at these other ones. We've got brief border wars, Jacobite rising for the block players. So for the block players, that's, that's the number one game right there. If you're a block player, that's, that's the one you're going to like the most. Uh, a lot of people really like Dawn's early light. That could have been the, that could have been sort of the surprise of the year, actually. Uh, Trishina souls, sort of that crossover Europe itch type of a game. And we need more, Bill needs more world war one strategic games. So I'm sure we're just getting the party started there. And then the conquistadors is just, uh, to me, I would expect we're going to hear a lot in 2021 about the Conquistadors. I think that's where that game's going to have more time. People are going to be playing it now over the holidays. Um, yeah, so I expect a lot of great things from that. So can anybody tell me which game is not in this list? So I've shown you all but one game that we released in 2020. And I left it off on purpose because <laughs> I want to make this more interactive. I know we can't talk right now. We'll do that in the after party uh, on our Discord channel in, in our Applebee's lounge area. We'll talk. But uh, for now, I'd like to know if any of you online, any of you care to take a guess at what game we released in 2020 that I have not shown tonight. Let's see how smart you guys are. I want to see if I tripped you up. Okay. All right. So it's ruined already because he's too busy covering the hobby. So yeah, Traders of the Air was a Euro game release. Uh, I have a great reason why I didn't include it. I didn't have space. Look, guys, I mean, th these two <laughs> these two slides are full. You know, it's, it's five each or Stellar Horizons took up the space I needed for Traders of the Air. So it was... Uh, it was not uh, something I meant to uh, take away. Now, Montelomar, I believe, was 2018. If I'm wrong, uh, Bill and I missed it. I think Montelomar was 2019, not 2020. So uh, we'll we'll find out. I'll post Jack. The uh, there is a. Um, there is a URL for the Discord channel, so if you'd like to join us for the after party, I will I will post the link uh, for the after party. So just stay with us through the end, and you'll get the link so you can join us on Discord where we do live video chat. And you don't have to be on video if you don't want. You can just do audio, and it'll be fine. So uh, Combat was not a uh, 2020 release. It was a reprint in 2020, but it actually came out in 2019. I thought Combat may have been released in 2020, but Bill told me, no, actually, it came out in 2019. So overall, um, I'd just like to get your guys' feedback right now. So if you talk uh, in the chat on Facebook and YouTube Live right now, you've been talking amongst, amongst yourselves right now already. So I'm curious if you could share with me. I'm going to take a moment. If you could just share with me for a moment, what do you think? Uh, of the year 2020 for Compass, a little over 20 titles. We had a pause, operational pause. Uh, you know, I feel like we had Guderian's operational pause here in, uh, because of the counter situation to get better counters to you guys for the Q4. But I'd like to get your feedback on what you thought of it. In the meantime, I'm going to look up that link right now uh, for, uh, for joining the uh, Discord channel for Compass because I know people are asking for it. I don't want you to have to worry about it. So I'm going to get that to you right now. And uh, here you go. So I'm posting it right now. So you're going to see a link in chat on both YouTube and Facebook. And that if you, I don't know if you can click on the link probably in chat, you probably have to copy and paste it onto your browser uh, destination uh, field. But if you go there, you can automatically, you'll get piped right into Discord. So give that a shot. Um, so Tom bought uh, twenty uh, combat in twenty twenty, and he's 
Uh, thanks, Tom. So I don't know how many people might be relatively new to Compass Games, so I'd be curious. Um, you know, I think we have a lot of uh, grognards here, a lot of experience with the hobby for sure. Uh, I think that's why you're here. I think, um, you know, one thing about con running Consum World, you know, we have many thousands of people, but to be honest, that vocal minority that's like active online, you're sort of the uh, ambassadors. And really, I consider you all evangelists. You're really evangelists of the hobby because if you have a local gaming group or people are asking you questions online or on forums or, or Facebook or Board Game Geek or, uh, you know, wherever you happen to be, you, you're sort of influencers because you're tied into the hobby because you're spending time with publishers. You're following things on social media. And about 97, 98% of the hobby isn't really doing that. Uh, especially, and obviously for Compass Games, you're like our top 5% audience. So, so the stuff you take away from these sessions, it's really sort of that word of mouth, what you can uh, tell others that's really impactful for sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, so uh, Andrew uh, joining us from Australia. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, he's got a great design coming out as well. Uh, and Napoleon's Imperium uh, next year. He thought 2020 was a surprisingly huge year for Compass considering the circumstances. So, yeah, I think we, uh, you know, and it really, if you think about it, what was strange, we didn't, you know, we got tripped up a little bit about the uh, situation with the pandemic for manufacturing and shipments for sure, especially shipments going out over overseas really got hit hard. Uh, but really, you know, even that counter, getting those counters uh, with a new supplier, that one actually, uh, <laughs> that one hit us as well for Q4 for sure, Andrew. So thanks uh, for the comments. Uh, thanks, E4. So uh, started buying in 2018. I hope, I hope you've been uh, satisfied with your purchases, uh, E4. Uh, you've been happy with the support. You like the titles you see coming. Um, one thing I do want to mention about our games, we have a lot of games um, on the back burner or being worked on actively. We just don't ever talk about them. In some cases, it's the designer and we leave them alone. The designer has his team and they've been maybe working on some stuff for a few years. So it's not uh, anything like uh, designer says, I got an idea for a game and we say, oh, we need it in three months so we can publish it in six months. So, you know, we're not rushing through stuff at all just to let you know. And, you know, we try to make the right decisions to make sure the games come out as high as quality as as possible. So um, thanks for the kind words about that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Um, see, Tom mentioned something here. It's true, John. I've been in the hobby for a long time, but didn't catch on about Compass until this year. And it's been a great ride. The feedback I have in this connection to gamers is awesome. Thanks, Tom, so much. Um, funny story. Uh, coming uh, from the corporate world of yeah, lived my life in the corporate world. Went to, if any of you know Thunderbird, that was a uh, really fun international management school, grad school I went to in, in Arizona, which is how I landed in Arizona. So I went through the corporate route pretty much my whole career. And then uh, my last gig was just sort of a, a horrible nightmare of a gig. <laughs> and I, I definitely had corporate burnout. I mean, I've had you know, some bad moments in corporate history. Everybody does, has their war stories and skins their knees. But I just had a horrible experience I ran into and I was so fried and burned out. And what happened was I did Consum World Expo, maybe 2016 or maybe it was 2017. And all of a sudden, Compass Games was releasing like, instead of one or two games a year or, or one, one, two games every two years, it was like they did like four or five games in a year. I was like, what the hell's going on? You guys were doing one game, two games every year or two. And then uh, you're doing four or five games a year. And that's when Bill Thomas explained to me, well, I told uh, Ken Dingley, you know, we've got the potential to do more here. If you come on full time uh, and go away from your corporate job and join me, we'll get a lot more done. So that's how Compass got my attention was, where are these games starting to come from? Because they were for 15 years, I think they were doing maybe a game a year or maybe was it two games a year? And then things sort of changed on a dime. And so I guess you could say I sort of came in just when that, process was coming. Then Bill made his five minute business decision when I was researching about maybe uh, taking constant press on the next level. He said, no, let's join forces, join us and let's see if we can make it work. So rest is history, but uh, it's been really, really something. I uh, wonder how many will be sending those 600 stimulus checks to Compass in 2021. Well, I guess there's a lot of titles to choose from. So, so Vex, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll spend some of that nice money for a really nice uh, takeout dinner. I don't know if there's dine-in dinners going to be happening in most places at the time, but hopefully uh, supporting your local businesses is so important right now. But uh, yeah, you know, however, however you want to spend your money, absolutely. Uh, will combat and enemy action Ardennes ordered now have improved 
uh, counters. So no, this is for new print runs. Uh, great question, Gray Wolf over on YouTube. Thanks for joining us tonight. So great question because we have stock of these games uh, still. So we already went through the reprint of combat. And in that case, I think we even had extra counter sheets lying around, so we didn't have to literally reprint them. And Enemy Action Ardennes uh, was, um, well, let me take that back. Enemy Action Ardennes, let me be careful here. Um, I have to double check with the office if it's based on stock of counter sheets we still have, that it's going to be available again, or if it's a purely done reprint where, yes, we absolutely have to reprint all the components including the counters. So um, for combat, I know the answer. I can go 50-50 with you on this one, Gray Wolf. I'll go 50-50 with you. For combat, absolutely, yes. It's uh, using the original counters, so they're not thicker. For enemy action Ardennes, I honestly don't know the answer to that, but I could find out by tomorrow for you. And you can email me or, or shoot me that message to Ask Compass Games on the homepage, and I'll, I'll get you the answer tomorrow. Not a problem at all. Uh, let's see here what other comments we have. Uh, I already spent, <laughs> somebody's already spent their uh, stimulus uh, check for pre-orders and pay later. Well, okay, well, we haven't charged you yet, so that's the good news. So I'm happy, I'm happy about that, that we haven't, uh, haven't necessarily charged you that. Uh, let's see other comments. Uh, now that's thinking like a war gamer. Oh, it's the positive modifiers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We need to do an episode about what games did you play in 2020? And this could be from any publishers really, but yeah, maybe specific to compass would be good just to hear what games did you play from compass games in 2020? So thank you, Martin, for the list of games. So there's Russia. I hope you have the uh, player's handbook, uh, Martin for Russia besieged. I think it's very important that you have that player's handbook. It will increase your enjoyment of the game. I will not steer you wrong. I would not steer you wrong about that. Brotherhood and Unity, uh, awesome. Fall, Fall Blau is one I want to play because I love the Operation Typhoon uh, system or game from SPI days. And Fall Blau is using the same system. Bitter Woods is a classic. Uh, that's a wonderful game. War for the Union by Rob Bema. Another, and Paris Alliances also by Rob Bema. Martin, I, Martin, are you overseas? I got to hang out with you. Are you like in Sweden or Norway still or did you move stateside? Because I think I need to travel out to you and... Uh, and find out where you are. Uh, good source for products in Canada. Uh, I think uh, maybe Moe's Game Table, Mo Maurice Fitzgerald can probably comment for that right now. I won't be able to comment live, but uh, if not, I'll provide you some good sources for Canada. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thanks for saying the, the box covers. You, you like the box covers. We have, a, we have our branding, so you'll always see the compass swoosh at the bottom of that box with the logo, with the credits, et cetera, and then the name. And then the top, we try to have at least one of the stripes, et cetera. So we always try to use that same Whoosh branding to be consistent. And uh, I'm glad you guys like it. Uh, we have, you know, we, we always look for good suggestions for box art. Um, we don't, we haven't, you know, we're always looking to improve. So thanks for the kind comments about that. Uh, yeah, you don't have to pay right away. You can just do the pay later. So everybody keep that in mind, pay later. Uh, commands and colors, uh, American Revolution, awesome, E4. Yeah, that block system, people said they love what happened with the block system, what Richard Borg did to enhance the system, to model, not to enhance it in general, but how he's using it to model uh, revolution, period. So that, that's very cool. Uh, Aaron's relatively new to Compass. Only game owned prior to 2020 was Gettysburg P. Ridge. Um, so Gettysburg P. Ridge, I'm assuming that's Battle Him, perhaps. And uh, yes, okay, it is Battle Him. Waiting for the next volume. So Aaron, I know you're on YouTube right now. If you get a chance to hop over to Facebook, if you do, uh, if you are on Facebook, on our Facebook page, Eric Lee Smith is posting playtest uh, re uh, re uh, progress reports from playtest for uh for the next game in the series so uh definitely want to check out um i think it's bentonville actually is the scenario it's bentonville so you might want to check that out if you can thanks for subscribing gordon great to see you gordon thanks for also attending compass expo events as well appreciate it very much thanks for being a subscriber to paper wars uh let's see uh it looks like your order how you ordered we fixed it for you so great to see that awesome uh, early summer playing absolute victory game really really helped past the lockdown time I have, oh that's awesome rick so happy rick over on facebook to hear that helped you with lockdown it was really interesting i was watching i saw on ebay uh there was a game uh, that was mint condition flat tray global war from spi 
and I almost was almost thinking of buying it, but you know, like I have a punch version. I, I love SPI. I'm a collector of SPI games basically because I was young then, right? So uh, it's a walk down memory lane. That's a nostalgic reasons is why. But um, but uh, somebody told me that well, if you you know, Global War had all those development issues, and all there is there is a great uh, there is a fan based uh, rules version now for Global War from SPI that's very good. I've been following that on the console world forum. So I was reading about it, deciding if I want to buy the game off eBay. But then somebody made the comment, well, Absolute Victory is really like Global War done right. So I thought about that. I go, you know what? Yeah, if it was between Global War and having to learn a whole new system and things didn't quite work out with Global War from SPI, it's, you know, you'd have to sort of, it got retooled, if you know what I mean. It got retooled. Uh, from the SPI release, it needed it. So that was a very insightful comment about Absolute Victory is sort of the is sort of that global war from SPI sort of done right. So I thought that's very cool. Uh, let's see. Dennis says his old brain cannot recall when he started buying Compass, but it has been a few years. You know, Dennis, if you send us a few hundred dollars, um, we could look up the records and we could tell you exactly when you started buying. I'm I'm just joking. Thanks for the support. Really, really appreciate it very much. Uh, happy to share, Jim, with you guys. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, still trying to earn my keep at Compass, as you can see. Uh, you know, other hat is working on all the projects. So we're going to do a project uh, uh, sneak peek, if you will, and just here in a moment. So I'm looking forward to doing a sneak peek of a project with you all. Uh, Aaron Smith bought Attrition of Souls and Dawn's Early Light and Love Both. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we're getting good uh, reviews. You know, the mounted maps and everything has definitely been the way to go. For all our one mappers, we try to do is mounted games, right? So anything that's a one mapper, mounted components, deluxe counters, um, or uber deluxe counters with the rounded edges usually. So Aaron, thank you very much for the count words. Yeah, the Attrition of Souls are one inch counters, I believe. I don't know if Dawn's Early Light were one inch counters or not. I'd have to check. Uh, John's not getting a stimulus check. Ah, better ask the wife. Yep, I got you on that one. Random events roll there for uh, John Longshore. Uh, how did I land? Uh, how did I land my dream job? I, I could tell you it's doing what I'm doing right now, but I don't have time to tell you because we've got too much to cover to review 2020, and I don't want to bore you with my personal stuff. So uh, maybe, maybe if you want to be bored in a future episode, we can we can do that. Um, Ray says, uh, yeah, Ray, thanks Ray for the pre-orders. Uh, yeah, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of games that aren't on pre-order yet. Believe it or not, there's a pretty amazing product pipeline right now. So it's, it's, it's pretty much nuts. Uh, Mo says, uh, Compass was like a garage kit company until a couple of years ago with just a few releases. Yeah, that's what I noticed. So Mo's experience is what I experienced as well. That sort of realization that what's, what's happening all of a sudden, why is Compass, how they, how are they doing it? Um, oh, thanks for the kind words, uh, E4. I, I don't get a chance to read these comments in advance before I show them. So, so thank you so much. For the nice comments, uh, let's see here. We got oh, you guys are just got so many. Uh, here we go, Martin. Martin hasn't told me yet where he lives. I'm trying to crash Martin's pad because he's got a lot of games I want to play. But Martin does have the Russia Besieged Handbook, so I want to know: Is there anybody online tonight that has Russia Besieged but not the Handbook? I want to know if you don't have the Player's Book because Martin has taken care of his business. He has seen it through. But I don't know about you other guys. We gotta we gotta find out. So thanks, Martin, for that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, a lot of great comments. I'm just going through here. Uh, boy, phew. yeah, great comments, guys. So uh, in the interest of time, what time do we have right now? Oh, gosh. Okay, so I need to keep going here, obviously. We're running over time. So thank you so much for the comments. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to segue into something here briefly as well. And that is uh, there is a final call of sorts. Alert, Will Ro or, or alert Rogers, right? So... So there is an alert here for all of you that, and I'm not saying this is an alert, like there's 15, 20 copies left. Act now or you'll never, you know, it's, it's not this fit of hysteria. There's enough hysteria going around in the world today. We don't need to add to the hysteria tonight. But there is a final call that Bill Thomas shared with you. I, I did leave one title out. So Mo, you're not going to type and say Saipan's not on the list because... I did that intentionally, Mo, just to get you on that. So Saipan's already sold out, so that's why it's not on this list. But just to let you know, guys, what's on this list are games that you could order today through the... Um, and again, I'm being serious here. This is not a hard sell. I, I never do hard sells. I've never done a hard sell in my life. 
corporate world or anything. It's just uh, there's too much in life going on to do that. Uh, except for the Russia the Siege Players Handbook, of course. There's always an exception, right? But uh, these are games that are getting close to being out of print, so I don't have like numbers like 10, 20. This is just a general statement from Bill Thomas that he shared at the town hall last week, that what you see here are games that are still available at the 35% off pricing. I cannot let it go. I cannot... I cannot uh, withhold myself here. Red Star White Eagle is one of my top 10 favorite games. And I tried for years and years to find Dave Williams, the original designer. He also did Battle for Moscow from SPI, for those that know the SPI lineage. And he was also designer of that, did some other things around Anzio, etc. But Dave Williams finally found the bastard, right? And that was really a great project. So Red Star White Eagle has some very cool has the coolest mechanics in it. First, it's world, you know, it's 1920, Russia Polish War. There's one or two other great games on the topic for sure as well. But this one had some really cool mechanics. I can still picture the rule booklet in my head because I did the layout. But it's got these retreat rules where, like, for zones of control, you pay extra movement point costs, and it's like a rating. And it's like, oh, get out of town. It was like such a cool. It is such a cool rule to have in a game that I haven't really seen repeated that much. But um, if I could put in a innocent, non-objective or slash subjective recommendation. Please check out Red Star White Eagle. We, we did fix uh, an, a huge order of appearance card. It was a complete misprint in the original GDW. It was unusable, couldn't be used. We fixed that, of course. We upgraded all the charts and displays, new map, thicker counters. So it is two maps instead of one. Five-eighth inch counters. Oh, it's just... Oh. I love that game. What can I say? One of the I did this game early on it was such so much fun doing that game. So, but there's a lot of stuff on here. So if you look here, Line of Judah was another one. Of course, Guam returned to glory. You know, there's a lot of stuff in here that uh, you might want to grab at the discounts, right? So again, final call doesn't mean it's a final call that they're going to go out of print tomorrow. What this means is final call means, according to Bill, it's like 99% sure he's not going to reprint these games. He was challenged on that by you all last week saying, you know, why would you say you're never going to reprint a game? And, and it, it, it's really with the pipeline we have, it's really working on new projects, etc. Yeah, maybe there's a print and play one day or what have you. I have no idea. But these games have been out for several years now. So Red Star White Eagle dates back to my first year at Compass. Maybe that one's three years only. But these games have been out for quite some time. So, um, yeah, it goes, so Bill's thinking, why would I really do a whole new print run for something that didn't race off the shelves? that really had a full life of several years. And some he said were five to seven years. So that's what's going on here. So, um, and I'll repost the uh, Discord link for you, Dakota, uh, in a moment. That's absolutely not a problem if you hang on. So I'll be happy to do that. So again, this is just a last call, if, if I could say that, for all of you that these games aren't going out of print tomorrow is my understanding, but uh, these will not get reprinted. Bill does not plan to reprint any of these games. So a little tear welling in my eyes about Red Star White Eagle, if I may. But yeah, that's sort of the scoop on that. So what I'd like to do now is we're going to switch gears here for a moment because I wanted to jump uh, I wanted to jump into a uh, game sneak peek, if that's okay. And I just want to make sure I'm set up okay for it here. So I'm just sort of I just took my screen share away uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, just so I can share share with you what I want to share with you next. So I promise to come back to the to the screen here. So let's uh, let's do that. So I want to give you an update on a project I've been working on for a little bit of time here. I did finish up the Russian campaign, 1974 original 1974 edition. We've talked about that already. Uh, it's been at the printers now. It's going to be released, I think, Q2. I've talked quite a bit about that. And, of course, I've got my other Russian campaign uh, through Consum Press. Finally, uh, that will be released next year as well, which is like a uber advanced sort of like advanced squad leader version of Russian, you know, has everything in it. So let's talk about another John Edwards classic game. I want to give you a sneak peek tonight. Uh, I don't want to bore you with stats and all this stuff. I want to talk about what's coming next year. So this is an updated box cover. We have a different box cover. If you go to our Victory at Sea pre-order page right now, you'll see 
a different box cover. This is this is as of two or three days ago. So we've we've swapped out the box cover. This is Victory John Edwards' uh, original 1992 edition release of Victory at Sea, which basically means we're not changing the game rules or anything like that, other than obvious errata. But we're going to enhance all the components the best we can and stay true to the original design. And that's what John Edwards wanted us to do. He wanted us to stay true uh, to the original design, Victory at Sea. So uh, I want to show you a little bit about Victory at Sea, if I may. Let me catch up on comments here just so I can see where we're at. So let's, let's take a quick look here. So here's the original counters. So these is a photo that I stole offline online. I have the game myself here off to the side, but I really um, don't have the room to show it right now. So this is just to give you an idea, you know, fairly large square counters for the game. You know, this is probably what you might ex expect for the color, etc. from that time period for a game. And then also I want to show you the, I'd like to show you the game map, the original game map as well. So here's the original game map. I'll go full in on this. So this is the original game map. It's, a very, it's an interesting odd size. You'll see a fold line. It folds in half right down that horizontal vertical. And that was actually the size of the box. It's in a big flat box. And, uh, oh, I should have brought the box with me. I should have showed it to you, but I forgot to bring it. But uh, it's got a big flat box. So when you fold the map over just that one fold, it, it goes right straight into the box. And it's not 22 by 34. It's a really odd uh, size, to be honest with you. I can't recall the size. It's like I want to say 18 by 28. And it's just, a, it's, a, it's an off size. It's not a full size map. It's actually less than a full size map using those large counters, etc. But what we decided to do was um, we didn't want to blow up, you know, there's no reason to blow up a map like this, guys. You can look at the size of the areas already, and we've already got large uh, counters in the original game. So we didn't need to do anything to enlarge the map like we did with uh, uh, Red Star White Eagle or uh, Decision at Kasserine or those other designer edition games. So for this original edition, we kept the exact same footprint. Maybe we added an inch only. So our version is going to be the same, pretty much the same size, but it's going to have additional folds. It's going to have additional folds on the map because it's going to go into a bookcase box, obviously. So the fold lines will be different, but it's going to be the same size map. It's going to be smaller than a full size map, basically. So what I'd like to do now is show you. So just give me a moment here as I navigate so I can show you what we're going to sneak peek tonight. So let me pull that up here quickly. And let's see here where I have it. All right, we're going to go to our trusted Acrobat. We're going to go to PDF, PDFsville. So this is our new map. I hope you can see that okay. Um, I don't know if I can go full screen here because I might lose the other tab. So maybe this is large enough for you guys. So remember, if you can, the original map uh, is right. Uh, see if I can go back to the original map at all. Just to do a side by side. So the original map is right here. So it's got those dark colors. We're not using a swastika, by the way. So that's sort of a no no. Um, yeah, we're not doing anything like that. So we've cleaned that up. But here again is the original map. And here is the new map. So I hope you like what you see. Again, it's going to be less than a full size map. Okay. So uh, again, just the areas. It's like War at Sea. If you think about War at Sea, uh, you know, we're basically following that same footprint. We've added a few little extra details uh, to the map as well. But it's a very simple game. It's like War at Sea or Dice at Sea, if you're familiar with that system, right? It, it comes from War at Sea. So Victory at Sea, its lineage is War at Sea. So it's like Victory in the Pacific. It's throwing the dice, having all that fun. Uh, some other things I can share with you is here's now what the counters are going to look like. So before uh, you saw those uh, one color counters, like it was blue background with the black print and the black silhouette. And here you can see, if I zoom in here a little bit for you, you can see a little more. Can you see the detail now with the flags? Um, using sort of a naval insignia for the Germans here, just to, to do that proper there. And uh, you can see, you know, they're going to be one-inch counters. So these are very large counters. They're one-inch in size. So uber big counters, but it works perfectly. The map's a little larger than a half-size map, but you saw how big those areas are. So this is going to work very much in tandem to the original game. Large counters, 
uh, with the map. So this is going to work, same footprint, just updated, upgraded components. So you can see all that information there. We also added a backside. The other game had some additional markers or things. It didn't have any backside to the markers at all. In this case, there is a purpose to have uh, backsides to the markers. So we introduce the backsides to the markers that do serve a purpose for the game. So you will have that. Here's sheet number two, which will only be a half sheet. So got some control markers. Uh, in the original game, they had these little cutout cards. It was not uh, not like cardstock cards. It was almost like paper, very uh, uh, not heavy cardstock, but they were cards you have to use scissors on to do control. So we didn't have to do that. We just did them as large one inch counters. So we've got we added control markers to them. Uh, these won't be rounded counters, though. However, these are full. Uh, one inch square. These are the same, it's the same counter sheet as Attrition of Souls. So we're using that same counter sheet, uh, uh, one inch thick, just to let you know. So, uh, so that's what they are. Uh, but there's also markers in the game. So these are nine sixteenth inch in size to track. What are we tracking? Well, it's, it's a victory with dice, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all those damage results happening on your map. So obviously that's a huge part of John Edwards war at sea, victory in the Pacific, victory at sea uh, line of games. It's all about tracking damage guys. So we're doing nine sixteenth inch counters. We think that's a good size to complement the place on top of the one inch counters. So that's going to I think fit nicely here. So nine sixteenth inch. Here's the back side of the markers. Yeah, we got some uh, sunk markers, unfortunately. Sadly to say, if that happens, yes, you'll sink, right? Get some sunk markers there as well. And then just to share, round it out a little bit, is want to share the charts with you a little bit. So uh, we've definitely upgraded. There were really were no charts in in the original game. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is, this was an easy, this was an easy victory to do a little bit, bit a better job, uh, bringing it into 21st century here. So very easy players aid card with reminders of everything going on. We've got the optional rules, how to read the units, sorry, skip there, but yeah, pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. Then we got the, I should go smaller here. Here's the full sequence of play card on the back side. So you have your also your sequence of play that you can reference. So uh, again, just handy to have. And then we added something new, which you don't honestly really need in the game, but we wanted to do it to be nice. We did an initial setup display. <laughs> Not very complicated, right? So pretty straightforward. On the game map itself, the turn record track will bring in the other units. Uh, and by name, there's a track listing them all. But uh, yeah, we want to do something nice for you that wasn't done before to give you a nice init initial setup display. So uh, so again, just uh, just hope it's something you'd like to see. Again, this is a simple game, guys, like War it's, if you think about War at Sea, Victory in the Pacific. Uh, yeah, this this is on the lower end. It's a it's an introductory level game. But hopefully challenging enough for the veteran player, as they say, right? That's so is the saying. But uh, I hope you like the work that's being done here. We've been working with Bruce Yerian, uh, Bob Cloyd, basically honoring the original edition game. Keep the game map small in size. It's not going to take up a lot of table space for you. It's less than a full map. It will be a mounted game map, uh, which is great. The units will fit great on the map because they're a full inch. And then we can add those markers on top of them. So I hope that gives you an idea of what's going to be happening on your tabletop. So, uh, and you know, we've got helpful reminders in the, on the player aid card and on the turn, turn record track has some helpful reminders because there are some special rules that do happen that you do need to keep track of. You won't be able to commit to memory after reading the rules once or twice we don't want you to forget even though it's a simple game there are a few wrinkles to it that you have to remember the special rules for sure so we've got all that covered for you in the turn record track etc so anyway i hope uh, i hope you like what you saw there so what i'd like to do now is let's switch gears and let's talk a little bit about uh 2021 so let's talk about what's going to be happening next with uh compass so let's go to that right now. So again, I'm going to be um, sharing my screen. So let's bring it up. So as you can see here, let's see how we've broken out our release schedule, at least for the first three months. This is also posted on our schedule. 
So the first release for January will be Devil Boats, which did extremely well, especially the Kickstarter just sort of did gangbusters for us, was caught us off guard, uh, did great. So Joe Carter's game did wonderful. And uh, we're excited to be releasing that right after the new year. Then we have Coalition, strategic Napoleonic game, can play the entire war in one sitting, uh, one night sitting, perhaps. So we've got that. Then we've got Paper Wars, Rally Around the Flag, Civil War. That's, I think, Ty Bama's premier issue as well. So looking forward to that. So that rounds out January of 20, uh, 2021. So there's January for 2021. Then for February, we have obviously, uh, again, these the, the order might shift slightly. I'm not sure. But again, for February, uh, right now, the lineup is first out of the gate with Indian Ocean region. Some of you have asked me about, well, what about South China Sea? Because there's lineage with South China Sea, same system. Uh, Indian Ocean region uses that game system and we are in the process of reprinting South China Sea but we don't have a release date we don't have a release date yet for South China Sea obviously the sooner we can get it the better because uh, it would be closer to when Indian Ocean region ships and as people like that game they might not have South China Sea so it'd be a great way to to promote and motivate folks to pick up at least pre-order the reprint but it's going to be coming uh, relatively quickly I believe in 2021 we just don't have a date yet for Indian Ocean region. Then we have Cradle of Civilization, so we're going to Ancients. Then we round out the uh, Magnus Opus World War II treatment. We started with the War Europe, and then we did the expansion kit for the War Europe, and now we've got the War the Pacific, which can be combined with the War Europe. <laughs> so, so now we're going real big. So we're going from Victory at Sea from John Edwards to the War the Pacific, <laughs> and and all. All, all your manhood will be corrected because it's a very manly game, very complex manly game for sure, The War of the Pacific. A great monster game from Ernie Copley. And then as I mentioned earlier, we've got uh, Andrew who's joining us from, uh, uh, from Australia today. Uh, good day. Good morning to you, Andrew. Uh, Andrew's design, Napoleon's Imperium, and he's shown you the history of that design. goes back over uh, 20 years, and he's got his uh, custom-built table with custom-built miniatures. I you know, spent many thousands of thousands of dollars to, to create this uh, custom... Uh, um, think of it. Think of it as the fanciest chess set in the world, except for it's for a Napoleonic game, and that's what uh, that's what Andrew did. <laughs> Andrew Roland did with Napoleon's Imperium, and we're doing the board game version. We're not charging you fifteen thousand dollars. We're not charging you twenty thousand dollars. No, we're charging you much less because it's going to be a board game. <laughs> so, so just want to make that clear. So, you we're coming out of the gate pretty hot for twenty twenty one. So we've got three in January, and we expect to have four in February. And then to round out uh, the schedule for March, we have five releases. So we're going three, four, and then five releases in March. Starting with the Korean War, that's Joe Bukowski's Victory Games Edition. Uh, I've been actually working just especially the past week or two, just doing final wrap up of the rules. We the last second we decided to split up the rules from the playbook, made some little modifications there, doing some extra things with the player aid card. So basically we're adding bonuses to the game because the counter sheet issue bought us some additional time. So right now we're finalizing things and we've added some nice things. So really excited about the Korean War. I've got a really good summary of what uh, has changed or been enhanced from the original games. So Joe Bukowski has not been shy about what needed to be changed. We had some very good project team members who have played the game for many years talk about a few things that they thought could be improved in the Korean War. So we've done that. Um, so we're really excited. Also to let you know for Korean War, it's a monster game in size with the map size and the large counters. So the full campaign... It's four maps, but there's a huge overlap of some of the maps. So it's not like four maps edge to edge. There is a significant overlap. But um, for most, like for all the introductory scenarios, it's basically two maps and maybe a, a part of a third map that can be folded down to like one eighth, you know, like a last, whatever that last fold line is for that third map. You just need that last fold line because there's just a few hex rows you need to add to those two maps whether it's from the south, whether it's the many scenarios that use the south uh, uh, 
two maps or whether it's the one scenario that uses the two northern maps. There's just a snippet you have to have. So all the scenarios pretty much, the smaller scenarios are half size from the campaign. And then of course the campaign is the four maps with that big overlap uh, to it. But it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful sight to behold though, set up. It's like one of those uh, deluxe, you know, it's like those true deluxe edition games when it's set up. We then have NATO, The Cold War Goes Hot by Bruce Maxwell. We've done some interviews on that, so you're probably very familiar with that game. We went to print several weeks ago. I think I announced that two or three weeks ago. Uh, everything went to the printer, so that game's going to be coming in March. Um, amazing. This is not the original NATO. I mean, there's so many changes here, starting with the order of battle, the humongous amount of play testing that happened. We had like 20, 30 play testers at one point. Huge following Bruce Maxwell had, just amazing play testers. So I cannot go through the list. Uh, maybe we'll have Bruce on when the game's released. He can go through everything, but just amazing. Then we have the lamps are, the lamps are going out. Second edition is going to be coming out in March. So I know a lot of people have been waiting for that. And then we also have the battle uh, for Germany, which is Doomsday Project 1 from Adam Starkweather. And then one of my personal favorites is Michael Resch's Galicia 1914. So he published this under his own label as a desktop published game, Galicia 1914, Oregon Simulations, I believe, Consims. And now we're going to have it in Paper Wars. It's going to be a beautiful game to round out the first quarter as Paper Wars with uh, Galicia 1914. So I hope with that you really like uh, the titles we've shown. I'll check uh, just to see some last-minute comments. I know we've really gone over tonight. So uh, I hope that provides you a good schedule. So it looks like you're happy to see uh, Devil Boats is going to be coming first. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Glad you found some games you're interested in. Like I said, Devil Boats has been getting a lot of attention. It's done really well. Uh, Rally Around the Flag is going to be that Paper Wars edition. So that's going to be great. Again, more for Boats. Uh, Moe's right. Yeah, the War Pacific is an absolute beast, but it's, you know, it's a playable, friendly beast nonetheless. So uh, that's for sure. Glad you've got a game there that you like the box cover too. That's awesome. Uh, I don't think it's 14000 for Andrew's uh, Napoleonic custom table. You have to look at that. Uh, it's probably... He probably built it for 20 or 30 and then if he was going to sell it as a collector's item, it's probably worth more than that. Uh, so yeah, so Korean NATO. Third World War is wrapping up. We're going to start the layout for the standard rules booklet next week, uh, I believe. Or if uh, if for any reason uh, Ken Dingley needs a little more time finishing up another project, it could extend into a second week. But next up, actually, is we're finishing up. We're actually finishing up Third World War, doing the layout of the standard rules. And we're when the standard rules layout's done, we're going to be doing the playbook, which is obviously covers all four games, all scenarios, the combined campaign, everything. So we're wrapping up Third World War series, but it's not going to be in Q1 for 2021. Uh, we're going to try to make Q, end of Q2 of 2021 would be awesome. That's what we're shooting for. But we're, in the, we're hitting the home stretch uh, for Third World War series, uh, absolutely. Uh, NATO's coming. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we'll have to have Adam on, Starkweather, the designer, to tell tell us more about Doomsday Project for sure. Uh, I know people have been waiting for Lamps, Steve, so uh, we're happy to have it. Check out Galicia. You can see it online on Constant World Forum or obviously Board Game Geek. You can get more information about the game. So we're very happy it's going. It's graduating from print and play to you know professionally produced, published game with maps and mounted counters. It's going to be very nice. So that's going to be great. Uh, yeah, Korean War is going to be awesome. So, Sal, it's, uh, yeah, what Bukowski's done uh, with the game and, and really the experienced gamers that were involved in the project. That's really a key differential. Same with Third World War series and NATO. When you have people that know a game inside out, they've lived the game and they end up helping you with a project, you get some pretty amazing results. So, thanks for the thumbs up, Steve, on the Paper Wars cover. So, uh, thanks for that. Dennis, you, I know you've had to leave. So, thanks so much. Just want to recognize you for the, for the, uh, if you replay the video, I want to thank you, Dennis, for being there. So let's see here. NATO or Battle for Germany or Third World War? My big, my first big war game decision for 2021. There you go. Absolutely. It's, that's the same for World War I strategic, uh, Michael. We, we do throw those dilemmas at people. Uh, so that's for sure. And let's see. I'm not sure, Ardwolf, which game designer of which game i'll have to see i'll just check which game because i didn't catch it midstream sorry about that there's a lot of comments in here but let me know what game you were talking about or maybe somebody's answering your question online already so devil boats devil boats i see devil boats uh yeah yeah definitely happy holidays to everybody merry christmas happy hanukkah uh whatever uh you know whatever you're celebrating with your family and friends this year absolutely uh, absolutely right 
Um, let's see here. Uh, just going through final comments here. Uh, let's see here. Sorry if I missed any realistic release for these games. Combat 2 is around summer time frame, so uh, probably early Q3. Enemy action Karkov. I'm working on that right now. I'm a, I'm I should say I'm facilitating that one right now with John Butterfield. We've got all those proofreaders right now. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to say second half of 2021 for enemy action Karkov. That's what I'm going to say there. Um, yeah, Contact Now Tactical Game Series. Uh, yeah, that one's going to be coming. So uh, we should expect the first release of that game in 2021, actually. At least one of the games, if not uh, two games. I believe the first one's NATO. That's the one everybody's been waiting for is the NATO one. So that will be that will be first. And then Ardwolf got your answer, Michael Resch. Yeah, same one who did the Twilight games, 1914 Twilight. That's his game. Or So I think we got some answers. Joe Carter's a designer of uh, Devil Boats. Uh, and also we're looking to do uh, another game with him as well, which I can't mention yet, uh, unfortunately. So, yeah, so great comments from everybody. I really appreciate it very much. So I'm sorry I ran so far over. I hope this was a good overview of what transpired in 2020 for Compass um, and what we have coming first quarter of 2021. I hope you like the sneak peek of what's happening as well. We're looking forward to 2021 because we hope to have, obviously, Compass Games Expo in November over Veterans Day weekend. We'll be actively promoting after the new year. Compass Games Expo 2021 will be back for face-to-face -face gaming uh, in November. We look forward to that as well as well as all our other activities. I promised that I would post the link for um, Discord channel. We're going to move over to our after party to Discord. Uh, in, into, uh, yeah, let me pull that up here quickly for you. So I promised I would post that again for you all. So here is the link. And you go to Applebee's Lounge. You just need to go to Applebee's Lounge. When you get on Discord, scroll down near the bottom. There's a bunch of voice video channels, and the first one's Applebee's Lounge. We'll be meeting in there just for a few minutes. I do want to leave you with one last message, or two last messages. First, I want to wish you all uh, happy, safe holidays. I hope you're all going to get some vacation time in soon because you've all surely deserve it. Um, hope you have fun, a great time, memorable uh, time with family and friends. I hope you can get together as a family this year. Um, also, uh, would like to mention that we might be doing a special show on Christmas Day evening. So we figure most people will be sort of fried, mentally fried after all the gift giving for those celebrating Christmas. Usually it's done by Christmas, late morning, early afternoon. So nothing official yet. Don't be surprised if we announce on Friday, December 25th. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Bill Thomas might be on to share something special with you guys. So I'll leave it at that for now. But in the meantime, I want to thank you so much for all the direction, all the tough love you've given us for feedback, critical feedback, things to help us be better. You know, keep, keep the comments coming. You've given us game proposals, all kinds of ideas. You've supported our games. You've promoted our games. So we can't thank you enough for what you did for Compass. Bill mentioned 2020 was a phenomenal year for Compass, a, a year of growth despite the craziness happening around us. So we're so thankful to all of you for all you've done for us. Uh, really, we couldn't do it without you, obviously. Just there's no question about that. But uh, yeah, we want you to stay healthy and safe. And enjoy. We want you to enjoy our games and enjoy games from other publishers. Uh, last thing I want to say about Discord channel, since it's fairly new, we have upgraded Discord, a very high level for uh, 1080 HD quality video and, and great sound quality. So it's better than any other board game company's site on Discord I'm aware of. So you're welcome to join Discord. And what people do is they play games using the video or the voice channels. And you, you're welcome to play any game from any publisher on our Compass Games Discord site. You'll really appreciate and enjoy the quality of the HD video, which you won't get from any other Discord sites right now that I'm aware of, or the enhanced voice sound quality. So definitely, if you're looking to do Vassal games, Tabletop Simulator, any games online, please take advantage of our voice or our video that we have on our Discord channel. That's really how Discord got known, was through online gaming and having those voice 
uh, video qualities, uh, capabilities. So with that, please uh, join us, if you will, over on our Discord for After Hours. I will see you there. Thank you so much for a very special and memorable 2020. Uh, I hope it was a good year for you. I know some of you have had some very tough challenges or your family members. I'm very sorry for that. Um, hopefully it's something we can learn so we can appreciate our other things in life even more moving forward. So thank you so much, everybody. I want to wish you all a, a very good night. And perhaps I will not only see you on the after party right now on Discord channel, but perhaps, perhaps I might see you next Friday on Christmas Day in the evening. Let's see what happens. Good night, everybody. Thank you.